Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Josephine Ko here and I'm a Bossendorfer concert pianist and music theorist. Welcome to another video session on jazz, Bach's Prelude and Fugue. In my earlier videos, I discussed some of the typical compositional features found in the well-tempered clavier. The primary motifs in Bach's preludes, the fugal subjects, his treatment and methods of development, the formal structures he used, the keys and modulations, and of course, his applied contrapuntal devices such as invertible counterpoint and stratos. In essence, these features are hallmarks of Bach's approach to polyphony. His ingenious logic manifested in his works has made them all the staple of musicians' training. As modern pianists and educators in the 21st century, the question is, how do we effectively apply the knowledge and understanding of Bach's works to our actual performances as well as to teach our students? In today's video, I shall address Bach's Prelude and Fugue No. 14 in F sharp minor. I shall illustrate, firstly, how we can approach keyboard polyphony to ensure authenticity in performance. Secondly, what is the essence of German Baroque music and how we can effectively convey that? Thirdly, what is meant by voicing a few and how can we achieve that successfully? Last of all, how can we use the damper pedal at appropriate places in playing Bach's works? I'm filming this at my Piano Academy. For several years, I have produced excellent results of students who have sat for British diploma examinations. A prelude and fugue is usually a piece presented in their repertoire. So if you have not seen my previous videos, do check them out. Meanwhile, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more of these works. Let us now look at the prelude. This prelude is essentially like a two-part invention. The pedal point is presented as a three-part texture only in a couple of bars. In the opening bar, the tonic pedal point of F sharp minor is presented in the bass. The next occurrence is at bar 12 to 13. In the key of C sharp minor, the inverted pedal point is in the highest part. Last of all, it's at bar 22, where the inverted pedal point of F sharp minor is in the highest part. Throughout the fugue, it is rhythmically straightforward, with just quavers and semiquavers, engaging in two-part counterpoint of note against note or two notes against one. Imitations occur freely between both hands, featuring the motif of the four notes as well as its inversion. A fast or moderately fast tempo is appropriate. Quavers are commonly played detached in contrast with the articulation of the semiquavers. In the key of F sharp minor, the music, which begins in the mid-range, immediately conveys a sense of German seriousness. This prelude is in no way light-hearted or cheerful. Instead, a firm, assertive touch is necessary, which would convey the strong and disciplined character, along with a definitive metronomic pulse. We need to understand that the German language is marked with strongly enunciated consonances and vowels. Well, this prelude clearly manifests Bach's German origin and culture. Where note against note counterpoint occurs, the fingers need to enunciate the notes clearly, with evenness and both parts being well balanced in tone quality. Meanwhile, marking out the phrases, motifs, and cadences. Let us now go through the prelude. Thank you. 
The four voice view is in 6-4 compound duple time, which opens with a four bar subject in the tenor voice. The notes move in stepwise motion, rising towards the dominant before descending back to the tonic. This is followed by the answer in the dominant at the fifth above. The tempo is certainly slow, with a serious, almost religious mood. I would liken this to being in an old Lutheran church, which was the faith of J.S. Bach and influenced many of his compositions. The Atana voice continues with the counter subject. The counter subject likewise moves in stepwise movement but taking on a quicker couplet figure. Here is the answer with the counter subject. A short cordetta follows. Before the subject is announced, in the bass in bars 8 to 11. Another cordata follows before the subject is presented by the soprano voice. The exposition ends at bar 18. Thereafter, the middle section takes over, modulating into various keys, such as the dominant key of C sharp minor, which ends at bar 28. The subject is next announced at bar 29 in the tenor voice again. This signifies the final section of the fugue. Our concern in performance would be the type of touch to voice the entries, how we could bring out the subject and balance with the counter subject, which pervade the entire fugue, developing mainly in three and four part textures. The clues in this fugue being the long notes. These long notes, usually dotted minims and tight notes, would need to be held firmly. The counter subject, of course, should not be played in any way heavy. Often, the touch is gentler and more subdued. Due to the complexity of the four-part writing, the hands occasionally would need to share parts to ensure smoothness of the interweaving lines. In bars 12 to 15, we could see this taking place. situation here, it expands into a four-part chordal texture at bar 15, of which the damper pedal has to be used. Thus, we would use the damper pedal either occasionally to join notes where the fingers may not be comfortably within reach or simply to enrich the sounds where the texture thickens.